Okay, coming to you live from Altamont Springs, Florida. This is Ember, the Ember Show. Um, welcome. Um, thank you for pressing play, first and foremost. Um, I'm just going to jump right into it. I normally have like some music playing in the beginning or or whatever, right? But I'm just kind of winging it today. It's been a, it's been a while since I've done a podcast. Almost close to, well, about two and a half, three weeks since I've done a podcast and around Christmas time. Um, battling this depression is not easy. Anybody that has gone through depression, and forgive me if you hear the loud TV in the background. I live with my parents, so... They have, they have the TV up, especially my dad, <laughs> to be able to hear it. So forgive me if you hear that in the background. Um, depression doesn't matter how much money you have, what your looks are like. Depression is something that I'm starting to understand, though. After a doctor visit, um, very simple doctor visit as well. wasn't like a full exam or anything. It was just just me talking, him listening, and and giving medical advice, you know. And um, he told me that depression really is in the mind, and we tend to focus on those negative thoughts that don't belong to us that are trying to pull us in a certain direction. And I've coped with that. You know, well, I've, I really related to that because I've had thoughts that, not necessarily suicidal thoughts, but I've had negative thoughts that linger into my feelings, my emotions, and it makes me not want to do nothing. And a lot of it boils down to me not being able to spend the time I feel my son deserves with me. And it's it's getting harder and harder to deal with it. And a lot of depression, I know that I can admit this, has been self-inflicted. So there's no one to really blame but myself. Now... Are there situations and circumstances that have lingered the depression? Of course, but there's no excuse saying that I can't control this depression. And I'm on the verge of doing that. I'm actually on the verge of conquering the depression. It's just a matter of time. And it's also a matter of spending more time with my son. And there's things that I need to do to to make that happen. I'm not going to sit here and point the finger completely at the mother or the grandmother. You know, there's a lot of things that that I haven't done. And I'll admit it. I'll completely admit it. And it all boils down to money. It all boils down to driver's licenses. I make excuses for the non-actions I do. I'm not afraid to admit these things. I'm not afraid to admit that I've been wrong. I'm not afraid to admit that I've made poor choices. I've let alcohol and drugs and certain people influence my life and the consequence from that is not seeing my son as much not being able to support him as much and recovery always starts with reality realizing that you have a problem is the first step I realize I've had a problem for a long time. And my son's only getting older. He'll be two years old tomorrow. Um, I 
Yeah. I miss him. I miss him and I just saw him Sunday and it's Tuesday. And I'll get to see him tomorrow. For a little bit. But I want more time with him. But I have to earn that. I have to earn that with the courts. I have to earn that with the mother, the grandmother. And I haven't done that. I've just been outlashed. I've been criticized. I've been belittled. And it all happens for a reason. To open my eyes that I need to start living better for my son. I never did it for myself. I never did it for a relationship. But I will do it for my son. And I want to vent a little bit more about what um, I'm going through. This is a venting session. I'm not going to post this. I'm not letting people know. Um, Whoever listens to this obviously cares enough to listen. So I appreciate you listening to me. But at the same time, there's some things I need to say in this next eight minutes. There's a lot of things I need to get off my chest. I don't know how to say goodbye. Well, I know how to say it. I just never mean it. And when I say I love you, I love you forever. There's going to be a lot. There'd have to be a lot that changes that. But there's only a few women that I've actually told that to and meant it. And those two women are still a part of my life. I always try to look for the negative, the narrative, and all of everything that has happened in my relationships, but it's always been me with the temper it's always been me with the lack of compassion the lack of trust emotionally broken down before I even got into any of these relationships and it hurts it hurts because I still have feelings for one in particular That in all aspects, I really can't have her. She already belongs to someone else. And the mother of my child belongs to someone else. And is happy. And that's what I want. I truly want everyone happy. That I have let down. If I don't make you happy, I hope the next man will. And whatever the case may be in your relationship, don't ever really give up, though. Don't give up. I'm in a very tough situation. A very tough situation. I have feelings for somebody again that belongs to someone else. And I'm so confused. I'm so... I'm so lost. It's a good word. I'm lost for words. I'm lost for actions. I'm... I'm lacking motivation, slowly losing faith, and I'm hoping in this next five minutes that I can release a little bit more, but it's hard, it's hard, I never, I never 
lose hope, I always stay optimistic. But at the end of the day, I'm stuck in mediocre because I've, I've kept myself here. I've always believed the negative thoughts. I always believed that I wasn't good looking enough. I believed the devil and his demons when God thinks so much more of me. I focused on what people thought of me and what the devil and the demons thought of me more than God. And I've been doing that for years. Trying to look good, going out with just a little bit of money. Wasting all my money, coming home broke. For what? For what? Just a little bit of satisfaction for a couple of hours to feel like the next day that you're not worth anything. I trade my time for peace of mind. But it's very temporary. I always come back to the root of my problems. I always come back to someone that I can't have. No matter what I do, no matter what I say, things continue to stay the same. This depression, and I'm going to do another segment, because I can only do 15-minute segments. So we're going to have a part two to this um, depression, part one. Um, Thank you for listening so far. This is The Ember Show. Um, I normally try to do a podcast every week, at least one. But sometimes it's every other week, depending on how I feel, depending on what I'm going through. But in this last two minutes, just pray for me. Pray for me to find my way. I miss doing my podcast. I miss recording music. Especially these past two years, the insecurities have been getting the best of me, and I have not been doing those things as much as I want to. And it's it's tough. Before this whole virus came around, life was already tough going through a custody battle, you know, trying to make ends meet, trying to keep my sanity, going to these court dates. Now it's over the phone. It's just like, what's next? What's next, Lord? I mean, I'm ready. Obviously, you have created me to go through these certain obstacles. So I never lose faith in that. But I hate how I feel sometimes. I hate how I think. I hate how I live. If it weren't for my parents, I wouldn't be here. I'd be really lost. And with one minute to go, I thank you again for listening. I hope that you have a blessed day. I hope that you realize your potential. I hope the insecurities you have disappear. I hope that you find true love. And I hope that you, if you have children, spend as much time as possible with them. I know that it can be draining. I know that they can they could be a pain in the neck. But they're a blessing. Be thankful that you get to wake up and see them every day. Be thankful that you're not in a grave or in a or a a prison. This is the Ember Show. Depression, Part One.